Hello and welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be covering topics under the standard 2.2D in 6th grade and also under the study island lesson, Compute with Integers. So the main thing you're going to need to know today is when you're adding and subtracting positive and negative numbers, how do the signs fall? When you're multiplying and dividing with positive and negative numbers, how do the signs fall then? The rules are a little bit different for each of those scenarios. So you're going to want to make sure you take good notes on that. And if I go too fast, just pause and rewind and get caught back up. And if all else fails, use a number line. Go ahead and sketch it out and use that number line to see how which way you should be going. Should your answer get more negative or should it get closer to zero? And you can even pause at the beginning of a question, write out what you think the answer is, and then watch the video so you can pick up ways that you can improve and then also see where you're doing stellar. So I'm excited that you joined us today and let's go ahead and take some notes. So here are our integer rules. Integers are positive and negative numbers. So if you're doing addition and the numbers have the same sign, so they're both positive, they're both negative, you're going to ignore the signs, add the numbers, and then keep the sign. So if they're both positive, you add them and your answer is positive. If they're both negative, you add them and your answer is negative. However, if they're different signs, you have one positive number and you have one negative number, you're going to ignore the signs, you're going to find the difference, so that means subtract, and then you're going to take the sign of the larger number. So if the bigger number is negative, your answer is negative. If your bigger number is positive, your answer is positive. Now, if the problem has subtraction, you're going to change the sign in the second number, and then you're going to change the subtraction to addition, and then you're going to follow the appropriate addition rule, so either same signs or different signs. And those are the rules for addition and subtraction. So let's go ahead and look at some examples using these rules. So in this example, I have a positive 14 and a positive 15, so same signs and I'm adding. So same signs means that I add these numbers. So 14 plus 15 is going to be 29. And they have the same sign, so my answer is going to have the same sign also, so it's also positive. So this positive 29A is my final answer. And that one should be fairly easy because that looks like what you started to do in first and second grade. Now I'm still adding, so I don't have to change any signs. I'm just, but now I'm adding and I have a positive number and I have a negative number. So I'm going to go ahead and just subtract those numbers. And when I subtract 75 minus 44, I end up with 31. However, I have to look at the sign of the bigger number. My bigger number here is 75 and it's negative, so that means my answer is also negative. So that's how you use the rules for addition when you have opposite signs. And like I said, if you ever get super stuck and you can't remember them, think of a number line and think of the fact that you're starting at 44 and it's telling you to move negative 75. So if you're moving negative 75, that means you're gonna move down by 75. And that's going to have an answer down here somewhere in the negative realm. And so that's going to make my final answer C. Here's another problem, and I'm still adding. So I'm going to look to see if I have same signs or opposite signs. This answer is negative, or this number is negative, and this number is negative. So I have the same signs, so I'm going to add those numbers. And when I add 46 and 20, that gives me 66. Only this, they were negative numbers, so my answer is also going to be negative numbers. Because the rule is, is when you're adding and they have the same sign, your answer has that same sign also. So I needed to have a negative 66 as my final answer, which is D. Now I have subtraction. And when I have subtraction, I'm going to do what's called stay, change, change. The first number is going to stay the same. And then I'm going to change the subtraction to addition. And then I'm going to change the 11 sign. So it was positive. I changed it to negative. 
And now I follow the addition rules. So I have a positive 80 and a negative 11. They're opposite signs, so I'm going to subtract. 80 minus 11 is 69. And I'm going to have take the sign of the bigger number, which is 80. It's positive, so my answer is positive. So my answer is going to be positive 69. And this one you might have been able to do without using the integer rules because it looks like something you learned in second and third grade. So now I have another negative or a subtraction problem. I'm starting with 76, but I'm taking more than 76 away. So I'm going to have to remember that I need to change that to addition. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite this problem so it's big enough to see. So I'm going to follow what's called stage change change. The first number stays, and then change change is that the subtraction symbol changes to a minus, and then the sign in the second number changes. So it was a positive 94, and now it's a negative 94. And I'm going to do my addition rules now. So I have a positive number and a negative number. The addition rules say if they're different signs, you subtract. So I'm going to do 94 minus 76. And when I do that, I get 18, only I have to take the sign of the bigger number. The bigger number here is 94, so and it's negative, so my answer is also going to be negative. So my final answer here is going to be negative 18, letter D. And if you got stuck on this one, remember you can draw your number line. And you're starting at 76, and you are subtracting 94. So that means you're going to go down 94. So subtracting 76 is going to get you to zero, and then you have to subtract more. That's going to get you below zero. So you know it has to be negative 18. Here I have another subtraction problem. So I'm just going to rewrite the whole problem so it's big enough to do stay change change on without looking messy. And so, like I said, it's subtraction, so I'm going to do it stay, change, change. The first number stays the same, the subtraction changes to addition, and then the sign of the second number changes. So it was negative, it's going to change to a positive. So now I have a positive 21 being added to a po positive 8. So I have two positive numbers, so that means I'm going to add and have the same sign. So I'm going to have 21 plus 8 is 29. And and they're going to have the same sign, so that my answer is also positive, and so it's going to make my final answer D. Here I have another subtraction problem, and so I'm going to have to do stay, change, change. So this first number is going to stay the same, so that's going to be a negative 80. My subtraction is going to change to addition, and then my second change is this positive 44 is going to change to a negative 44. So now I'm adding, but I'm adding two numbers that are both negative, so they have the same sign. So my answer is going to have that same sign. So my answer is going to be negative. And when I add 80 plus 44, I end up with 124. So my answer is going to be negative 124, which is choice B. I have one last subtraction problem. So remember when you have subtraction with negative numbers, you're going to do stage change change. The first number stays the same. The subtraction changes to addition. And then the second number changes its sign. So this negative 34 is going to become positive 34. So now I'm adding two numbers with different signs, so my answer is going to have the sign of the bigger number. So the bigger number here is 61, it's negative, so my answer is going to be negative also. And then because they're different signs and I'm adding, I'm actually going to subtract these numbers. So I'm going to have 61 minus 34. And when I do that, I end up with 27. And I had already said that's going to have to be negative 27. So that's going to be my final answer, which is D. Now we're going to look at multiplying and dividing integers. So the rules are a little bit different. So you have to keep them straight between adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing. 
When they have the same signs, your answer is always positive. So if they're both positive numbers or both negative numbers, then your answer is positive because two negatives make a positive. If you have different signs, so one's negative and one's positive, then your answer is also going to be negative. No matter if which, if the negative number is bigger or smaller, if they're different and you're multiplying and dividing, then your answer is negative. So here I have positive 88 times positive 87, so that means my answer is going to be positive, so it can't be B or C. And I'm just going to have to go and write that vertically and work it out. So I'm going to take 7 times both of the 8s. 8 times 7 is 56. And then when I do 8 times 7 again, I'm going to have to add that 5 in. So it's going to be 61. Move over a space. 8 times 8 is 64. And 8 times 8 is 64 again, but add in that 6 and that's 70. And then I add these two numbers, and that leaves me 7,656 as my answer. And I've already said that had to be positive, so that's going to be D. So now I'm multiplying a negative and a positive number, so that means there are different signs, so my answer is going to be negative. So right away I know it can't be C. So now I just have to go ahead and write this problem vertically so I can work it out. And you can put the negative by the 62 if you want to. And so I'm going to take 2 times 2 is 4, 6 times 2 is 12, and then I'm going to do the same 2 times 2 is 4, and 6 times 2 is 12. And then I'm going to add both of these numbers and get 1,364. And like I already said, different signs, so my answer has to be negative. And then it's going to make B negative 1,364 my final answer. So now I'm looking at multiplying two negative numbers. When you have, when you're doing multiplication, it's the same sign. That means your answer is going to be positive. So two negatives here means it's going to be positive. So I know right away it can't be A, B, or C because my answer has to be positive. So then I just take 40 times 2, and that's going to be 80. And I already said that has to be a positive 80. So it's going to make my final answer D. And now I'm looking at division. I'm going to have 16 divided by positive 32. They're both positive, so my answer is going to be positive, so it can't be A or B. And 16 goes into 32 two times with no remainder. So my answer here is positive 2. Now I'm looking at division and these, I have a negative 32 and a negative 4, and they are both the same sign, so two negatives make a positive in multiplication and division, so it can't be C or D. And then, so I look at it, 32 divided by 4 is 8, so it has to be a positive 8, since two negatives make a positive, and that's going to be my final answer, A. For our last problem, we're doing division. And they have different signs, the first one negative, the second one's a positive number. So different signs means that my answer is going to be negative. One negative makes a negative. So it can't be B or D because those are positive numbers. And so 50 divided by 10 equals 5, but it has to be a negative 5 since there's only one negative in my question. And that's going to be choice A my final answer. Thank you for joining us today and I hope you learned something new.